after I liberate the Jewish people, I will go to Africa to help liberate the black people. We have uh, our African brethren, the Ethiopian Jews, who are in our society, and I personally work every few weeks to integ help integrate more and more and incorporate them in our society. Hello, guys. I hope wherever you're watching us from, you're having a great time. This is AfriPost, and welcome to today's video. Now, my question to you, our viewer, in today's video is, having seen what Israel is doing in Gaza, would you really want it to also have presence in another place? Because I came across a clip where Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was talking to African leaders, and he was saying that he has a plan for Africa. Now, before I say anything, let's take time and watch this video keenly. This meeting... I think will be a milestone. Uh, the meeting of uh, seven leaders from African countries with Israel. Uh, I think it underscores the fact that we are in a monumental change in the relations between Israel and Africa, beginning here. It is warranted by the great changes that are taking place in the world. We at once have uh, an enormous boost and jump towards development, towards the, the possibilities of this new century with all the promises of technology. But at the same time, we have uh, a savage medievalism that seeks to take all our societies back to destroy them, uh, destroy our freedoms and destroy our hopes. So we at once have to do two things, develop our countries into the future and fight back the forces that want to take us to a dark past. And we can do this. I believe uh, Israel is the perfect partner for the countries of Africa. I want to thank deeply all the excellencies, the leaders who came here, again on short notice to attend the summit. From our conversations, I think we put uh, flesh on this structure. We believe it. It's not something we say uh, lip service. We give lip service to. We believe it. We've begun to do it among our respective countries. But I believe that we see opportunities in expanding this to Africa as a whole. Israel has uh, fought terrorism and has developed, as you say, Mr. President, Today, we've developed certain capacities which I think are important for the defense of the world against this global onslaught of terrorism. But equally, we have tremendous opportunities. Uh, we've solved our water problem, even though we're a very dry land. We've solved our agricultural problem. We produce uh, with great productivity uh, vegetables, dairy. Uh, I always am boasting which cow produces more milk per cow in the world. You think it's a French cow or a Dutch cow, it's an Israeli cow. It's a computerized cow. Every move is monitored, you know. But we are eager to share this technology in so many fields with our African friends. We think that Israel now is the best partner that the countries of uh, Africa could have and it's something that is dear to our hearts. The founder of uh, modern Zionism, the national movement of the Jewish people, was Theodor Herzl, and he said, after I liberate the Jewish people, I will go to Africa to help liberate the black people. We have uh, our African brethren, the Ethiopian Jews, who are in our society, and I personally work every few weeks to integ help integrate more and more and incorporate them in our society. Uh, I believe this. I believe in Africa. I believe in your future, and I believe in our partnership for this future. And I believe that this meeting will be seen uh, as a turning point in Israel's ability to reach the broad number of African countries, which is our is our goal. We want a better future for you, a better future for all of us, and we think we can be your perfect partners. So once again, I thank you for this extraordinary 
display of hospitality uh, and warmth and friendship. Israel is coming back to Africa. Africa is coming back to Israel. Thank you. Now, after watching that video, what really comes to your mind? Because for me, it is really something that I can't explain. The reason being, I have just read part of the report that Israel has released about its plan for Palestine after the end of the war. And in this plan, they are saying that they are going to continue having control of territories of Palestine that are currently occupied by Israeli forces. And they are also saying that they reject any discussion of two-state solution that has been proposed over the years to have the tensions between Israel and Palestine to really end. But according to Benjamin Netanyahu, he thinks that that cannot be the solution. Remember, Israelis are settlers in that region because as we have seen different maps, Israel just came there in the 1940s and that is when Israel was formed. But Palestine was existing there and therefore I would have thought that it would be easier if they accepted the two-state solution so that they do not have war as they are neighbors. But the plans of Benjamin Netanyahu are totally different. He wants Israel to control the entire region. I tend to think that this war has been initiated with the desire for Israel to expand its territories and have control of the entire land in Gaza region. So that is what Benjamin Netanyahu is saying when it comes to issues regarding Palestine. But then, in this discussion that he was talking, he says that after finishing with the Palestine, he's going to come to Africa. And he's coming to liberate Africa. My only question to him, you're coming to liberate Africa out of what? Or who is here in Africa that you're supposed to eliminate? Because if you look at it, most of the Western nations that are exploiting Africa are your buddies. And they're continuing to support you in the atrocities that you're committing in Palestine. In fact, it is only Africa, led by South Africa, that has come out to really condemn what Israel is doing. But most of the Western nations, they say that they will continue supporting Israel because Israel has a right of self-defense. But we've seen atrocities have been committed. So I tend to ask myself this question, who will Israel come to liberate in Africa? Because Africa needs its own liberators. Remember, this is also the same reason why Israel was granted an observer status for the African Union. You can now really get where these issues are coming from because Israel had requested to be given presence in African Union so that they have an observer status and understand how African activities are going on. And this is how Western nations have captured Africa because they give us organizations that they are funding with their own money and they come here to give us rules and how to engage with ourselves and even with others. And this can only be defined as neo-colonization. So I don't know what you think about this because for me it is really out of place. I cannot accept that Africa can allow itself to be micromanaged by Israel. And Israel does not have any right to come to Africa and try to tell us that they want to liberate Africa. There is nothing to liberate Africa from. If there are those who are supposed to be liberated, you should come and fight Western nations and get them out of Africa so that Africa can rule and control themselves. But since they are your supporters in the wars that you're having against people in Gaza, this is not a place where you can come and export your wars. I don't know what to think about the topic. Please, if you're watching us for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and also share. And please give us your comment down in the comment section. Thank you. May the good Lord bless you. Goodbye.